In this video, we're going to be discussing aerofoils. And an aerofoil is a component that's used to create lift when wind flows across the aerofoil in a certain way. So we're going to look at the aerofoil and we're going to see how the aerofoil experiences lift and drag depending on its angle of pitch. Before we do that, we're going to introduce some terminology. So in the bottom left hand corner, we have leading edge, trailing edge, upper camber, lower camber, and cord line. So the picture that we have of the aerofoil there is a cross section. So I want you to imagine the aerofoil going into the page. This is best represented by an aircraft wing or a wind turbine blade. So we're going to be discussing the aerofoil in the context of a wind turbine blade. So the leading edge of the aerofoil or the wind turbine blade is the forwardmost point here which first comes into contact with the wind. So it's the front of the aerofoil, if you like. The trailing edge then is the tip of the aerofoil down here, which is the final point of contact for the wind. We also have upper cambers and lower cambers. The upper camber is the upper half of the aerofoil, separated by the dashed line in the center. And the lower camber is underneath the dashed line. The dashed line also has a name. The dashed line is called the cord line and the cord line connects the leading edge to the trailing edge. So what we need to discuss is when the wind strikes the leading edge of the wind turbine blade, how does it create lift? And as a consequence, why is drag produced? So the starting point for understanding this is to introduce something called attached flow. Now as the air strikes the leading edge of the wind turbine blade, the air is going to separate. And I want you to imagine two air particles side by side. When the air separates, the air above the aerofoil is going to travel over the upper camber like so. And the air below the aerofoil is going to travel across the lower camber like so. When we have attached flow, the two air particles separating at the leading edge are going to rejoin at the trailing edge. If we were to pitch this blade too far, then that flow would actually separate. But providing we have attached flow, those two air particles are going to be reunited at the trailing edge. So how does this affect air velocities and pressures? Well, if we study the diagram, we can see that the air traveling across the lower camber has a shorter distance to travel. If it's traveling a shorter distance in the same time, then it must be traveling at a lower velocity. Conversely, the air traveling over the upper camber has a greater distance to travel in the same time. Therefore, it's going to have a greater velocity. Now we know from earlier tutorials on the application of Bernoulli's equation, that if the fluid slows down, then the fluid pressure must increase to compensate. The total energy must remain the same. And if the air speeds up across the upper camber, then the pressure must go down. So all that said, we have a pressure difference where we have high pressure below the aerofoil and we have lower pressure above the aerofoil. And this results in something called the total aerodynamic force. The total aerodynamic force then is going to be perpendicular to our cord line like so. Recall that we had a pressure difference such that the pressure below the aerofoil was greater than the pressure above the aerofoil. So we had a pressure differential existing in this direction. So here we can see that we have a total aerodynamic force. But what we're interested in is two separate forces, a lift force and a drag force. And we can determine these two forces using trigonometry. The lift force acts perpendicular to the wind. So the lift force is going to act vertically like so. F subscript L. And the drag force acts parallel to the wind. So the drag force acts in this direction here, force due to drag. So depending on the angle of pitch of this blade, we're going to end up with different total aerodynamic forces, but we're also going to end up with different ratios of lift to drag. 
lift to drag ratio is the lift force divided by the drag force. What we're really trying to do is achieve our desired lift force whilst minimising the drag force. If you can imagine here, the drag force is going to be trying to bend the wind turbine blades, whereas the lift force is going to be causing the rotor to rotate. So let's consider how changing the angle of pitch of the blade is going to affect the aerodynamic force, the lift force and the drag force. So to the diagram I've added our pitch angle theta. If you can imagine, increasing theta, so increasing the pitch of the blade, is going to lead to a greater pressure differential. Therefore increasing the pitch of the blade, assuming that we still have attached flow, is going to increase the total aerodynamic force. So naturally by increasing the total aerodynamic force, we're going to increase the lift force. But the consequence of that is we're also going to increase the drag force. So we need to be certain that we're not creating so much drag such that we're going to damage the wind turbine blades. Let's consider the opposite scenario. If we decrease the angle of pitch, and I'll try to re-sketch this. If we decrease the angle of pitch, then the pressure differential is going to be lower. Therefore, assuming the wind speed remains the same, our total aerodynamic force is going to be less. But what we can see now is that drag has been reduced and the lift to drag ratio is going to have increased because the ratio of the lift force to the drag force is greater. So the reason a wind turbine blade would pitch into and out of the wind is to achieve a desired rotor speed. If the rotor speed is too low based on the wind speed, then we need to pitch the blades into the wind to catch more wind and increase the total aerodynamic force. When wind speed increases and our rotor speed is higher than the desired speed, we can pitch the blades out of the wind in order to catch less of the wind and hence produce less drag. This is particularly beneficial in very high wind speeds when we don't want to damage the wind turbine blades. So to summarise, when the wind strikes the leading edge of the wind turbine blade, the air splits. The air travelling over the upper camber is faster and lower pressure. The air travelling across the lower camber is slower and higher pressure, which leads to a pressure differential and a total aerodynamic force perpendicular to the cord line. That total aerodynamic force can be split into a lift force, perpendicular to the wind, and a drag force parallel to the wind. The lift force is desirable because it causes a wind turbine rotor to rotate, whereas the drag force is something that we wish to minimise because it places stresses on the wind turbine blade.